just how would you describe or tell the story of Ringel and Murphy and how, how you guys were able to get him here? T-Mac. Him and T-Mac are really close. Um, they've been friends for a while. Uh, when it came to a point where he was in the portal, um, we did our due diligence with the film review, the evaluation process. Um, uh, we did a good job with, you know, making sure we're recruiting them and communicating. We did the background check. Uh, we also had, you know, a bunch of people that had connections with him and his family. Uh, so we were able to have the opportunity to be able to get him on campus. And once we got him on campus, uh, you know, it was pretty much a done deal at that point. He's shown you the camp so far? Toughness, you know, toughness and experience. Um, he's he's very even kill. I think his uh, his personality fits within the room. He's able to show up every day as a pro. His preparation is uh, always on point, and he shows uh, you know his experience through his play. He does a good job with the remainder of the group too, with uh, keeping everybody's spirits high and, and communicating well and understanding that. You know, we're all going to have to play a role within this offense to be able to have an opportunity to be as good as we want to be. Dave and then Brian. Bobby, just obviously with that team back out there, it's, it's, a, it's a, always been a, a next man up mentality in football. So who were the guys that you wanted to be those next men up uh, going into camp uh, to, to really step up? And who have been those, those guys so far? Uh, it's really not what I, who I wanted to be. It's more or less who's, who's going to show up. You know, we've really made this a true competition within the room. Been very transparent with everybody. Uh, people obviously know where T-Mac is and his ability and his opportunity to be able to play and play at a high level. With that said, you know, we need other guys that's going to be able to give him a spell and give him a break on the football field. And obviously to play a car cross from him. You know, uh, other than that, if you just have him, you know, it's easy to double team him. So, you know, I, I put the challenge to, to the whole room. You know, not only the guys that I think that could play outside, but the guys that think they could play outside. If they feel that way, I'm going to give them my opportunity, and I'm going to believe in them until they show us something different, and then we're just going to continue to move guys around. You know, we're constantly fluid with the depth chart right now. Guys are playing multiple positions. Uh, there are some guys that I feel like are uh, – their skill set is, is set to play in a, in a specific position, so I'll, I'll make sure that they're available for those – certain plays to be able to get the time on task with the quarterback and timing and all these type of things. But um, it's an open competition, and we're going to continue to keep it that way until uh, guys start to separate themselves. AJ Jones has been a guy who's kind of been on the cusp for the last year or so. What does he have to do to take that next step to put himself in the conversation to be one of those rotation guys? Uh, it's tough to play from the front, right, to be the, the guy. And, and as of right now, with T-Mac down, uh, that position, that X position, is really exposed. So, you know, I gave AJ, I'm giving AJ his fair opportunity to be able to play that position, uh, like I'm giving Devin Hyatt, uh, Rex Haynes, and uh, even Jackson Holman, you know, that opportunity to be able to step in and have their opportunity to play there. Uh, for AJ, I just would like to see him be the guy. You know, it's tough because T Mac sets the bar so high, but that's the position, and, and that's what is required of that position. So, for him, he just needs to continue to be consistent, continue to make the contested catches, continue to use his size and his length to his ability. I think he's doing a good job of taking the coaching with the technique stuff. Uh, a lot of the things are new to him that, that we're talking about within that room, but I think he's doing a good job of, of trying to grab a hold of it and put his best foot forward. When you have a guy like T-Mac who you know is going to be a starter, who's going to be in there once he's ready to participate, how do you keep him involved and uh, with all the install and all that when he's working on the side to try to get himself back up? He's spending plenty of time in the classroom with me. You know, he's consistently in my office. We're consistently talking ball. Um, he's in every meeting, so he's not missing any of the installs. He also has a, a special ability to be able to see a play and, and apply it with on the football field. I, I noticed that in the spring, the moment I got here. Um, not really concerned with him being able to catch up to speed, more concerned with him, uh, you know, understanding that he's gonna need some help this year, you know, and, and he's, he's actually accepted that, and that's why he's really, if you notice him at practice, he takes his time to be able to pull guys to the side and talk about some things that he sees, things that, uh, you know, 
what he would do specifically in those situations, which is extremely helpful to me because I've, I've been so far away from the game and actually playing the position. Uh, there's nothing more powerful than having a guy uh, of his stature and his ability to be able to grab a younger guy and be able to speak to him about what it feels like, what the you know process is, and what you need to be doing in a specific situation. Well, and on that note, like, because there was a Jacob Cowan here last year, which enabled TMAC to have more of an opportunity to break out, how important is it to have that very strong number two so that they're not just double, triple teaming him? Yeah, that's extremely important. And I think we will err on the side of having more of a, a two and a three. You know, I think we have a good group of a rotations guys that have some good redshirt sophomores that are ready to play. You know, they might lack the game experience, but what they've shown me is they are ready and you know, I'm going to continue to push them to be ready. Obviously, we never know none of that until the, you know, the ball rolls out and the, you know, we're ready to play. But it, my belief within the group is that we have a strong group of, you know, six to seven, maybe even eight guys that are going to be able to rotate and help this team win. Michael and then Jason. How has T Mac handled the rehab process? Um, he's it seems like you know you guys are all doing kind of fun stuff, and he's doing not fun stuff. Has he? Has he been patient? Has he been engaged? How would you? I would describe it as a pro. He handled it like a pro. You know, it's, it's always tough to be away from that because there's, especially at a young age like him, you start to question all these type of things. Can I still do it? You know, am I going to be able to play at the high level? But you can see his focus in his rehab and his ability to want to push himself within the rehab as if it's, you know, preparation for a game and preparation for practice. Uh, he's, again, in every meeting, he's always on time. He's one of the earliest guys in the buildings. So he is, he is still handling, handling it like a pro. And, and that's his job right now. You know, until, until it changes, that's what his, what his responsibilities are, and he's taking care of it. Jason and then Troy. What are your impressions so far of uh, Jeremiah Patterson? Uh, I, he's, he's, he's what I thought he was. You know, uh, I think we did a really good job with that evaluation process. We really took our time with Jeremiah. We didn't jump on that right away. Uh, in, in our spring recruiting process, we really uh, were able to get out. I saw him live. Um, I've watched every single one of his games, probably every single one of his reps. Uh, the final piece was that was being able to see him live and work out. And when I got out there to uh, San Mateo and watched him work, uh, it was it was immediate for me, and that's what I needed to see. And so he's 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 bringing exactly what I wanted him to bring to this offense. Uh, I also feel like there's going to be more that I could be able to give him sh sooner than later, which is great. I think his learning curve is outstanding. He's doing a great job of uh, really attaching himself to Noah and trying to ask the right questions and uh, get the, all the knowledge and the information that he needs to be able to fit within this offense. I'm excited to see him play. First with Jeremiah, we've seen him kind of as the punt returning role, kind of working with you back there. What have you seen out of him there? And how difficult is that for a player to pick up if he's never done it before? I don't know if he has and what kind of experience does he have in that? Yeah, he's th – that was one of the questions I, I asked when I was, was looking for a player like Jeremiah. You know, has he done punt returns and is he willing? Because that's the biggest thing, you know. Guys love to go out there and catch punts before practice, but – when you're the solo man back there for a game, it's a really difficult position to play. You got to play with a lot of confidence. I think he carries himself with a lot of confidence. I think he's comfortable back there. Uh, and again, this is all speculation until we get to the game situations. Uh, but I think it's a, a position he could play. I think he could help us back there for sure. And then in terms of a rotation, is there a number that you guys want to get to for the season? Is that a number is there, or just next man up kind of mentality and WC game action? Uh, it's always next man up. You, you always got to take that approach just to be able to, you know, to give everybody their, their fair shot out and their fair opportunity. But, you know, we would I, – I think we'll be comfortable with the rotation of, you know, six, seven guys. And, and if there's an eighth guy in there that, you know, is, is showing us a lot, then, you know, it's all, it's all predicated based off of what they show us. You know, if they're showing us that, w that we need to play them, we will play them. I think Coach Brennan has done a great job of – you know, making sure that we have an obligation to play the best players and, you know, to be able to protect the program. That's what you have to do. And this whole team as a whole, I think, has really adopted that mentality that the best guys will play. Justin and David. I feel like Jeremiah is really good at separation. 
how do you, what do you attribute that to? His quickness, his quickness, and then just his experience. You know, you could tell that he's played a lot of football, um, and his ability to be able to get in and out of breaks really helps him. He plays with a lot of confidence. He really trusts his hands, which is a big deal too, because it allows you to get edges on guys and not worry about having to be in a perfect spot all the time, uh, because you can make up for it with you know with a big catch radius and, and strong hands. But you know he's really done a lot with like taking a coaching and really focusing on you know the film study stuff. When we're in there, I could see his intent to really focus on staying present within the meetings and hearing all the coaching tips and the coaching points and. Uh, and again, that ability to be able to take that from the classroom and apply it the next day on the football field, uh, he, he really has that. And then in what ways has Malachi grown since this spring? He is, uh, he's really coming into his own. I think he's starting to find his niche and his ability to uh, fit within this offense. And I think he's challenged, I've challenged him, and he's accepted the challenge on doing the things that are difficult for him. You know, the physical part of the game, staying on the football field, not just running verticals, but you know, the tough yards, you know, the bubbles, the quick slants, like uh, the contested catches, all of these things. I think he's done a good job with trying to uh, focus on that when those moments come. And the only way you get that is from practicing that way. You know, what's what's great about our defense and, you know, going against, you know, really good corners and good safeties, like Mal is getting the opportunity to really I improve his game from practice. David, and then last question to Brian. Bobby, uh, the other day in practice, at the beginning of practice, you got on the guys, because you know it was a drill, they weren't wearing their helmets, and their helmets were just out of order. It's just you know, what, what's the anatomy of your focus on just minutia details like that? Ah, oh, my favorite word, man. That's my favorite word. You should ask the receivers how to spell that. We talk about the minutia all the time in our classroom. So, um, you know, it's the it's the details that matter. You know, it's the things that you think that really don't mean a big deal, but eventually they turn into something. And let's just try to give them a little over order. I'm not really over the top about that, not super militant about that, but when you get a small moment like that, why not? You know, let's look like we know what we're doing, um, even when we don't, because there's times where we're not perfect, but it's, if you're playing fast and it looks smooth, some people don't know. So I'm just trying to make sure that they understand that, that everything matters and the details matter for them, especially when it comes into the passing game. Timing, you know, splits, uh, depth of routes, all of these things are crucial when it comes to having a, an elite passing game. Last question, Brian. Uh, Ramello before I mentioned something about that you've helped him like better understand his use of his time and, and being able to figure things out. How is that, what, what's that kind of relationship like? You know, Ramello's a senior, like this is it for him. You know, like every rep matters, and I think that's what's important to him. So I, we, Coach Brennan talks about the right now. You know, like making the boys, everybody wants to be present, but, you know, how do you be present? Do you focus on the right now? And so, uh, you know, every moment that I get with him especially, I really try to make him focus on the moment. And same thing with T-Mac. Like, you know, let's – even if it's something simple like a walkthrough and the details and, you know, you're trying to, you know, enact per perfect form even though we're not going fast. But, you know, just that, that mentality of focusing on – you know, your steps and, you know, your releases and your hand placement, your eye control. And then more importantly, just having fun in the moment. You know, like this is going to pass you soon. You don't know what's next, but you know this is here now. Enjoy it. All right, that's our time. Thanks, no problem. Thanks, guys.